dot org slash NYC. All right. So what's going to happen is you're going to call that number, which is again, 877-733-2767. Actually, in that box, I have a whole thing of uh, giveaways and there are pens also. So who doesn't have a pen? If you need a pen, um, in that box, there's a, uh, I'm going to repeat that number one more time. Here we go. So that number is 877-733-2767. And so you're going to call that number. It's going to be a recording. Um, you can leave, they speak multiple languages. So it doesn't, uh, you, um, you can leave it in your language. And uh, what's going to happen is someone's going to call you from the Red Cross to make the appointment. So we, okay, here we go. Everybody have a pen now? Here we go. Eight. Seven 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 three two seven six seven. Okay, and the program is called Sound the Alarm. It's eight seven 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 three three two seven six seven. All right. So again, they speak multiple languages. Um, it is a recording when you first call it in. But somebody from the Red Cross will call you and they will schedule an appointment. And again, it's all free of charge. So if you, like I said, please pass the word to your neighbors, uh, to any uh, communities that you belong to, um, to your church organization, and to family and friends. Because we want, the most important thing is we want every New Yorker to have a work and smoke detector. Yes, sir. Soundthealarm.com? Oh, so it, the uh, website is www. Soundthealarm.org or or okay. org forward slash NYC. Yes. I know you said to save the question for later, but I might not. Oh, okay. So do they go into co-ops or is it is yes? It okay. they'll, they'll go into co-ops, um, uh, uh, private residencies, uh, buildings. Okay. So what if I have private health or the Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. We have one downstairs. In multifamily, they'll do every every level as long as we have access to it and we have permission, both the tenant and the landlord. Mm -hmm. So it's a great program. I have one in the kitchen. <clears throat> I have an alarm in the kitchen, but not in the bedroom. So you can call this number up and they'll install it. If you have the one in the kitchen, is it battery operated? Is it nine volts or, or uh, double A or triple A batteries? Do you, do you have to change it every few months? Yeah. Okay. So with ours, it's a lithium battery. So it's good for 10 years. So you no longer have to change it. So when they change the uh, when they put the one in the bedroom, they'll um, put the one in the kitchen, the new one in the kitchen. And it's the combination. So it's both carbon monoxide, it detects carbon monoxide, and it also detects uh, smoke and fire. Okay. So that's the first thing. So when you get home today, um, test the smoke alarms. Make sure they're working. And so that's the first thing. So what we also ask is that um, if you're ever cooking, and I know it could be annoying, right? We all done it where we're cooking and the alarm goes off and where, you know what? Let me take it off. Let me take the battery out for a few minutes and we forget to put it back. So we've had incidents in the past um, where that's happened and they never replace the battery. They never put it back. Or, or, or better yet, it's two in the morning and all of a sudden your, your smoke alarm goes off because the battery's, uh, it's warning you that the battery's no good. So we go over there, we pop it out, but we never replace it. So the thing what happens is that when you need it to work because it doesn't have a battery, that's where we had fatalities. Even here in the Bronx, we had a fire where they had some working smoke detectors, but they had no batteries inside of it. So it's very important. That's why we suggest that you call Red Cross and you update your smoke detectors because it's, uh, again, lithium batteries. So you don't have to touch it ever again. So they're good for 10 years and then you, um, you replace it after 10 years. So if, you, uh, if you're cooking, please, Keep the batteries in there. It's, it's doing what it's supposed to do. It's warning you. All right. So the other thing is on page four. 
we always say, let's have a plan. Just like in school, right? Uh, we used to practice fire drills. I just came from uh, uh, on the west side. I was uh, talking to kindergarten kids and uh, had a, a lot of uh, questions. But the one thing they do is they practice fire drills. And that's what, especially at, if at home, we have uh, little ones, grandchildren, or we have visiting uh, family members. We want to know, we want to have a, uh, a plan where to go, how to get out, and where to meet up. We should have a, a, point of, uh, a point to meet up because let's say it's three in the morning and there is a fire. You're woken up by the alarms and, and there's heavy smoke, a lot of heat. It could be very scary. And if you don't have a plan, everybody scatters different directions. And we've had, uh, we have had incidents where A, uh, one of the parents does, um, can't find his uh, child and runs back into the, uh, into, into the residency looking for them. And they might have ran out a different direction. They were just so scared. They didn't, and, and because of the heavy smoke, they just ran out. They just wanted to get outside. And the parent runs back inside looking for them. So that's why we say, let's have a point to meet up. Everyone should know that point. Practice that fire drill, how to get out. Practice how to open up the window to the fire escape. Make sure it's a clear path. Um, there's nothing on the fire escape, not just yourself, but any, any, uh, any of the other tenants that live there. Don't put anything that blocks the fire escapes or, or put, puts weight on the fire escapes. If you do see that, let the property manager know, or worst case, call 311 and report it because you need a clear exit out. The, Fire grows within 30 seconds. It, it grows double the size. So in two minutes, that fire is four times bigger. So keep that in mind. All right, so we want a clear path. And the other thing we ask is to know what type of building you live in, right? Here in New York City, we have different types of building. Um, we have private dwellings where it could be a private house or multifamilies. We have non-fireproof which means that if you have fire escapes in your building, that's a non-fire uh, non proof. That means that fire can spread from one unit to the um, next. You want to make sure, the most important thing is to know what kind of building you live in. So when, so in uh, the other type of building is fireproof, which means that it doesn't have fire escapes. That fire, will be contained to that one unit. It won't spread from, um, from unit to unit. So in that case, you need, it's very important you, you, know, you know what type of building you live in because if it's fireproof, you don't leave, if the fire is not in your unit, you don't go down the stairwell to get out. Because what happens is, let's say you live on the 21st floor and the fire's on the fifth floor, all that smoke is rushing up, right? And if you're coming down from the 21st floor, you're taking the stairwell all the way down to trying to get down to the uh, lobby, right? You breathe in that smoke, it's gonna overtake you and we've lost lives that way. So that's why it's very important to know how to respond because it, you have to know what kind of building you live in, fireproof or non-fireproof. Now it's the opposite if it's non-fireproof. Non-fireproof, you wanna get out as quick as possible. That fire is going to can spread from unit to unit. And once it gets in the walls and it shoots up to the roof, you, we can lose that building. So that's why it's very important to know what type of building you live in. So again, if you live in a fireproof building, right? The fire's not in your floor. You're going to call 911. You're going to let them know which unit you are in. So that way, when we come, we do a check, especially on those units that are um, called in. We want to make sure medically you're fine. Um, and then you're going to put a towel. You're going to grab something, wet it, put it underneath the front door so you don't get that smoke coming into your unit. You're going to go to your window. You're going to crack it open. We don't want all the way open because especially if you live in, um, in the upper floors where the wind does play a factor into that wind can hit that fire and, and move the smoke. So we, what we recommend is you open up slightly, right? You call 911, 
and you put a, a wet towel, whatever it is, underneath that front door. So that way you don't get the smoke into your unit, okay? Now, for non-fireproof, right, you want to make sure, A, that you have a clear pathway to your uh, fire escapes. Because if you can't go through the front door, if that fire is spreading, you can't go through that front door, you got to be able to open up that window. Everybody in your unit has to be able to open up that window and get out, okay? So, so that's why it's very important to know what kind of building you live in. We've had, if you, if you heard in the news multiple times where, especially in these uh, fireproof buildings, people panic and they don't know what to do and they're trying to run down that stairwell and all that smoke as they're going down they're overtaken by smoke. And so it's very important to know what kind of building you live in. You don't want to go into that stairwell. Yes. You Question. said if the <clears throat> fire is on your floor. If it's not on your exception? floor. Sorry? Is that an exception? If the fire is on your floor? Yeah. As long as it's not in your unit. Okay. Yeah. Because it's it's pure concrete around it. Yeah. So it won't spread. If, even if it's on your floor, you Stay in, the you stay in your unit, yes. And you call 911 mm -hmm. and you let us know so that way. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And keep the doors closed because that's the way people died in the Twin Towers. Like right. Somebody ran out, left the door open, and right. other people died. So we just came up to a year on that fire, right? Yeah. We lost um <clears throat> we lost 19 lives, right? So in, in that incident, right? Um, the the uh, those doors were supposed to automatically shut close. They didn't. There was a it, it failed, right? So with, with again, even fireproof or non fireproof, you want to close the door behind you. You want to make sure you close, even though it, it's uh, it's nerve wracking and 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 we uh it, it's a, a very stressful situation. By closing the door, you're containing the fire. It's going to burn out within that oxygen in that room. So, again, when you go home today, please let everyone know A, the fire escape plan, and B, to make sure you close the door behind you. So that way, that fire is contained to your unit, especially if it's a non fire. Um, we had another fire where there was a child playing with matches. So his apartment caught on fire here in the Bronx. And it got into the hallway and they used the wrong type of paint in the hallway and it just it was a blowtorch effect. You know, and, and, and <clears throat> I remember, uh, I think it was maybe 10 years ago. Okay. There was a big fire in 66 uh, West Gun Hill Road. Okay. I'm in 50 West Gun Hill and I'm on a sixth floor and smoke is coming up to the sixth floor of my building. But nobody told us to run out of the building. We wasn't hurt, but it was scary. Right. But the, the building next to mine uh, was damaged and the fire men had to break open the windows and everything. Right, right, right. So that's why the most important thing for you is to have work and smoke detection. Right. And also they said don't go in the elevator. There's right. The Great point. Yes, yeah. yes. I didn't touch upon that. So um, the other thing is this. Do not go into the elevators. Uh, what happens during fires is that many times it, uh, the elevators might go out of service. So it, it becomes a trap, right? If you're in there, heavy smoke, and you're, if the elevators go out of service, now you're stuck in there. So we do not go into the elevators. That's another thing, please. When you get home today, especially if you have little ones, do not take the elevator. If you have anyone that's in your unit that is, um, might be wheelchair, wheelchair bound. What you can do also is you can call the local firehouse and you can let them know. That way we have what's called uh, SIDS, critical information. And when we're responding to the, to the building, it might say something like apartment 19J, wheelchair, wheelchair bound. So that way we have a heads up. We might call an extra unit to help us bring that person down in the wheelchair. Okay, so it's very important that you reach out to your local firehouse and you let them know. So, if anybody you know, any relatives or friends that um, 
that are wheelchair bound, please reach out to your local firehouse. I think over here would be 5252, right on, uh, on, um, right here on the parkway, right? That's the local firehouse here for this area. So just make sure you know which is your local firehouse. And you can either give them a call or stop down, uh, stop by during uh, regular business hours and the officer will update his, uh, his critical information. So what happens is as we're responding and we're in the back of the uh, engine or the truck. We have, um, we have a monitor that comes up with information about the building. Any, anything unique about the building will come up. We have, we have uh, <clears throat> two elderly men that are uh, in the, the uh, mobile chairs. Okay. We have, we have them in the building. But also, um, what makes a, a stove explode? Because that happened. It happened in rain and the cook that was cooking. Right, a leak. Food, it just exploded on her. Right, just as, as simple as a leak. Oh. So, yeah. Oh. So it, 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 it might be on, but uh, mm. it's just spilling gas. So that's why you want to have the carbon monoxide, the, the dual, uh, the combination alarm. It will pick that up. Oh. All right. So, and if that ever happens, you notice that it's, uh, it, uh, it was on. You want to open up the windows and call 911. We'll come in there with our meters. You don't know how long it's been on like that. Very dangerous. You, can, you, you take a couple of hits of that and you can pass out from it. So that's why, that's why we're there. We'll come in there with our meters and we have the, the equipment to come in. Okay. All right. So getting back. So page five, know the type of building you live in. That's what we spoke about. Very important. You have to know how to respond to uh, an emergency. Be it non-fireproof, it's totally opposite than fireproof. Okay. And then private dwelling, you're going to get out as quick as possible. That's considered non-fireproof. All right. So in the middle of the book is some um, some safety tips, right? So the number one um, cause of fire is cooking, right? What we say is when you're cooking, especially if you have little ones around, you want to have a, a fire-free zone or kit-free zone. That way, if we have our pots and pans, make sure the handle is in. It's as simple as, you know, little ones, they, they have a lot of energy and they're running around. And if they hit that, that pot turns over, that pan turns over, that, that can cause a severe burn. So it's, it's just being mindful. Pots and pans, we want to turn them in. Um, we, want, we want to have a kid-free zone. Um, the other thing you want to have is who has a fire extinguisher in their unit? Okay. Just, just do me a favor. When you get home today, check the dates. Just make sure it's still, you know, we buy a fire extinguisher and we forget that it has a expiration date. So just double check, make sure it's uh it's still it's still uh valid. All right. Um, it is hard to use it just in case. And one time we had a pandemic fire, we had a house. You have to constantly make sure that you know how to use it. Right. So uh, most of them have the instructions. It depends if it has a pin, you're gonna pull the pin, you're gonna press down. And just side to side at the base of the fire, not the top of the fire, but the base of the fire. And once you open it up and once you start it, you use it until it's completely empty. Even if the fire is out, it's a, a fire extinguisher, it's a one time use. So you use it until it's completely empty and, um, and it's side to side and you hit the base of the fire. All right. So when you, um, when you get home, please check the uh, expiration date. The other thing we say is, Keep, uh, keep baking soda right next to you. So that way, if there ever is a, a fire with you're cooking and it's uh, with oil, baking soda, you can smear the fire, okay. right? Because if we throw uh, water on it, on oil, that's a no-no, it's just gonna spread it. So baking soda always works and you can get that at the 99 cent store or your local supermarket. Um, and also, the cover on it that way you can smear it that way you, you you cut off the oxygen all right 
electrical. So let me grab something over here real quick to show you. Can anyone hear me? Yes. Oh, I, I wanted to ask the fire or tell him something. Okay. Is he still there? Yes, I'm still there. Can, can we hold oh. it for until uh, the end? I'm going to take all questions at the end. Okay. So, okay. like I'm saying, oh. right? Something as simple yeah. as this. Ah. All right. The, the question I. Oh. I have one question. Sure, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, and, and it's very important. Sure. When you're, le when you're leaving your apartment, close the door, but don't lock it. Right. Yes. Yes. Thank you. That, that, was, that was great information. Okay. So now getting back to electrical, right? So here in New York, space is tight, right? And uh, most of us, right, have one of these, right? So now this one has six outlets, right? How many would you use if you have six? Well, too many. Three. No, no, but if you have six, how many would you plug in and use at the same time? What's your guess? No, at the same time. The most you would use is half three. So if this has six, you're only using three. Okay. You don't want to overheat it. So, and the other thing you want to, when you're buying either uh, a surge protector or, or, or um, extension cord, you want to look for two symbols and they're in your booklet. You want to look for UL, United Laboratories, and OSHA. What that saying is that it's been tested. It's like a consumer's report. It's been tested and they put their stamp on it that it, the product is good, okay? So something like these, these two items, we don't want to purchase it at the 99 cent store, all right? Can you repeat about the one that has six and you only use three? Easy. Yes. So whatever, have, however many outlets are in here, you only want to use half because then you can overheat it, okay? And the other thing is this, with these, you don't, you don't uh, put anything that produces heat or cold. So if it happens to be the refrigerator, the uh, AC, you, it's going directly into the wall, into the outlet. You don't, you don't, it overheats it, it's too much. So something like that goes directly into the wall. It doesn't go on into one of these. So if it produces heat, or cold, it goes directly in the wall. Oh, okay. 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 So, and the other thing is the extension cord. We don't plug it into uh, into a surge protector. Okay. Extension cords go directly into the wall. All right. So that's with the electric, right? The other thing is right now this time of year. The, uh, everyone, uh, people are using space heaters. We want to make sure that if we're going to use the space heater, it produces heat, right? So we're going to plug that directly into the wall. But we also want to make sure that we have three feet around it that it's clear, and um, that nothing can, um, like a towel, a curtain, or your bed sheets, don't have, yeah. don't. Um, don't um, touch it where it can lead to a fire, okay? Another important thing, the one that has the six flow. Right. So that's it, they're not one the fire. Right, so if you're not I using it. it I keep on shutting it off. And right. I'm afraid. Yeah, it is. So it should be off. It should be, if you're not using it, turn it off. Thank you. Right, okay. Okay, and then the last one is smoking. And that's, you know, that's, again, we, we just wanna be mindful. Um, if, you, if, you, if anyone in your household does smoke, you wanna make sure the ashtrays are clear 
You know, we want to make sure that we're not in the sleeping position where that's where um, we've seen fires happen, where the uh, the person might fall asleep with while smoking, you know, on their on their chair or, or lazy chair or, or on the bed. And once you knock out, that drops out of your hand. That's how fires have started. The other thing is candles, right? Um, uh, you know, we use candles uh, for the scent and um, Sometimes we put them by the window. This time of year, there's a lot of wind. We had a fire in Queens where you had the window open, partially open, the candle turned over throughout the night, and that's how a fire was caused. Um, what we recommend is now they sell these candles battery operated, right? And they give the, the same effect. They give the same effect as a regular candle, and they last longer, right? You know, speaking about candles, um... <laughs> Long time ago in Catholic Church, it was the day before Easter. Okay. And they shut off the lights. They were, everybody was holding the lit candles. And this little boy wasn't paying attention. And he the candle kind of leaned over toward this girl's hair right. and it caught on fire. Yeah. Uh, ever since that day, they they used the battery. Right. Candles. Okay. Yeah. And they last longer. You know, yeah. they, they do the same effect as uh, when you turn off the lights. So we, we recommend it. We recommend it. We've seen too many fires started because of uh, uh, because of candles. Actually, I'll show you. I have one. Yeah, I'm going to show you right now. She have one in my bag. Let's see. They have scents too? Unfortunately, they, they uh, don't. But you know, with technology, I wouldn't be surprised if they come out when someone comes out with that. So yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> so look so these are battery operated candles so they do the same thing if you were to turn off the lights it glows it and glows in the dark all right and they last longer and they're much safer especially if you have little ones they can burn themselves or they can knock it over and cause a fire all right so and then we, we got we got an idea for a shark <laughs> All right. So, <clears throat> so, so again, the key points. If you don't, if you have uh, working smoke detectors, let's test them once a month, starting tonight. The second thing is, if they are battery operated, or uh, you don't have them, or you don't have them in the kitchen or in a bedroom, please call that number I gave you, because um, everyone. In the Zoom call, did they get the number? I can repeat it one more time. So that way. <clears throat> so again, very important. It's called Sound the Alarm, 877-733-2767. And again, it's retired firefighters. They'll install in each bedroom and in the kitchen, okay? So we're gonna um, to pull that program up. The other thing is to know the type of building you live in, how to, how to respond to a fire, if it's in your unit or if it's not in your unit, if you live in a fireproof or non-fireproof, and make sure everybody in your household is aware of that, how to respond to it. Um, and then the other things, electrical, cooking, the key points, they're all in that booklet, all right? Any questions, I'll take questions now. If you have any questions, um, so you want to smear that fire as quick as possible, right? So either in in the booklet, right, on page eight, you're going to stop, drop, and roll. You want to smear that fire as quick as possible, okay? All right, questions? Yeah. If you have a dog or a cat, should you get them first and then run out of the house? If you have time. I mean, I have a little, I have a little dog and I know what they mean, they're all family, but fires happen, and like I said, they grow double the size within 30 seconds. And if you live in a non-fireproof, 
that fire spreads, you want to get out as quick as possible. Show them the drill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But if you can, of course, yeah. But the most important thing is that you get out and your family members get out. So, so if you're older, it's kind of hard to get to the fire escape. I think ours is not not fire escape. So. Right. It's great to be our kitchen. I would say to get out of the window and onto this. Then you have to jump from the bottom. The bottom ledge is that. That's why it's important to go through the motion. At least open up the window. I don't recommend going out on the fire escape, but yeah. just going through, Make sure. getting halfway out that window, just so muscle memory, because it is right if you're not used to it, especially going or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But just. Make sure everyone knows how to open up that window and there is a clear path to the uh, fire escape. So, so, uh, yes, question. What about when you, you know there's a fire, maybe it's in your apartment, you know there's a fire next. If you go out and start banging on doors. So can you repeat the question? So oh, okay, yeah, oh, yes, yes, okay. So his question was, what, what if there's a fire in your union? Do you start letting the neighbors know about it? The first thing is get out of, especially if it's non fireproof, right? You want to leave yeah. your unit, but yet fireproof or non fireproof at that point, right? Because it's yeah. in your unit. You want to get out, want to make sure everybody in, in your in, in your unit is out. So, in that case, if it's in your unit, you want to make sure everybody in your unit is out. Right. As, as soon as you guys are out in a safe area, then you call 911 and close the door behind you. So that way you can contain the fire. So don't go around. Bang Call 911 as soon as you get out. As soon as you get out. Right. Because by closing that door, you're containing the fire. I understand. Yes. Okay. It's just that, you know, most of us know on our floors there are either elderly right. or lots of their children. Right. You know, right. It's at night. Right. They're sleeping, whatever. But you yeah. Yeah. By, by closing that door, you're buying time. So that way, yeah, yeah, especially if it's in your unit, you want to make sure everybody in your unit is out. You close the door, and then once you're in a safe location, call 911. So, was another item we read about is that bad fire mm -hmm. a year ago, right? That people were banging on each other's doors, no one knew what to do. So, so and, and the thing with that, that building was. The, they had so many times where the alarms would go off oh. that it became routine. Oh. And I was, and it, it was all around a bad situation. Right, right, still, right, right. Still, right. still right. Uh, better about what you did. Right, and, yes. And, and, yes. Oh, I got it. I got to get my <laughs> that, that, that building was fireproof. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Oh. Oh. So, yes. Fire. Violators, a lot of violators. A lot of violators, right. Federal building. Right. Well, the sound the alarm, again, going back to the co op again, you have to reach out to the co op board or anything or just call them. Because in a co op, you own shares of yeah. the co op. So that space inside your unit is considered your unit. So, so you can, yeah, them. you can put up, yeah. So. Question, yes. What happened? I think it was 1990 was a happy land fire. Sure. What happened? Was that um was that a lot of violations where a lot of people got killed? Yeah. Right. There, there was there was a Repeat lot of the oh, okay. So uh she was asking about the uh the fire at the uh, happy, happy land, land social club. Itself. Right. So that was an intentional fire, right? Um a, a jealous boyfriend. Um, actually lit the place on fire. So, right, right. It was an illegal club. Right, right, right. yeah. So, I mean, that, that was a step to the access to the clothes. Right. You know, that almost happened, the same thing almost happened with one road because somebody was jealous that his girlfriend was in a bar. Mm -hmm. He almost set the bar on fire. Right. People in it, but they caught him. Okay. Take a hurt now. Yeah. Yes, question. Did, did they, um, the hot springs 
I'm not 100% sure, but the way some people responded, I would say no. That's why it's very important. That's why we're trying, as the fire department, we're trying to get the message out because here in New York City, we always, or if we always hear about if it's a fire, get out. But fireproof, you, if the fire is not in your unit, you're staying in your unit because you can become, you can overcome with smoke. So, all right. Questions? Yes. Just one more. Yeah. We used, when we were kids, I said, get down and crawl along. Okay. Is right. That's still true. Yes. It's very true. So his question is when, as kids, we were told to get low to the ground and crawl. And it's still true. If, if you're in a uh, fire, that heat is going to push you down. When we respond to fires, for the most part, we're not operating standing up. We're either doing a duck walk or we're crawling in there and hitting it with water to cool the temperature in that room. So if the fire is in your unit and it's going, you're gonna you're gonna be crawling out of there. That heat's gonna force you down. You won't be able to stand like this. Question. All right, so. This is the uh, the ones that we set up in the um, the uh, the, co uh, the combination. It's lithium battery, and we want every New Yorker to have a working smoke detector. So again, pass the words to family, friends, organizations that you know. Um, we want again, we want in each bedroom and in the kitchen and hallway. All right. Any other questions? Common. Sure. Yes. In 1993, you remember the first attack on the World Trade Center? Um, my sister was working in a whole company on uh, the 13th floor okay. uh, to World Trade Center. One of the men in her company got them all out. They were on the 13th floor. And she remembers glass breaking and all that smoke. And, Yep. He got the belt. Yep. I don't know if he had fireman training or what, but um, you know what? It's not even about fireman training, it's, it's, you know, it's something it's sometimes within the person. You know, people put their lives at risk. That's awesome. It's great. Yeah. All right. Any questions? All right. So I have some giveaways. Let me just say one, just a couple of things. Does anybody else online oh, have sorry, a question? Yes. Just wanna go and go and go on. We see somebody using their phone. <laughs> and ahead. what I'll do is I'll leave some booklets here also. And also you said they were online also, so. Yes, yes. oh yes. So yeah. you send me those links or so on there. Okay, so I'm gonna. No, I'm gonna give it to them. Okay, 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 All right, very good. And then Julie, you want to introduce somebody? Sure, I do, thank you. Good. Thank you for the interruption. Um, I'm delighted to uh, welcome a representative from the Bronx Borough President's Office, Kenny Agosto, who wants to come and say a few words. We're sorry that the Borough President couldn't be here herself, but she's sending a very dedicated staff member in her stead. Bienvenido, Kenny. We're at bar. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. How you doing? Uh, I want to first thank our guests from our FDNY, our bravest. Give them a big hand. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. I was eclipsing you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Buenas tardes. My name is Kenny Agosto. I am the Community Services Associate for the Bronx Borough President. She wishes she could be here. She is heartbroken she couldn't be here. Uh, but she sends her warmest regards and hopes to see you all soon. First, I'd like to thank the members of the, of the, of the FDNY for hosting this important fire safety workshop. This is one of the series of workshops that the Bronx Borough President is coordinating as part of her safety plan following the horrific Twin Parks fire 
a year ago. Some of the worst fires in our cities, in our city's history have occurred in the Bronx. Therefore, fire safety is a top priority for our administration. We are thankful to the fire department of the, of the city of New York for their service and collaborative efforts to educate our communities and reduce fire-related tragedies in our borough. We are also partnering with the American Red Cross to sound the alarm on the need for our residents to have smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. If you are in need of a smoke detector or carbon monoxide detector, please reach out to our office or your local FDNY in, uh, or station, company station. Uh, close the door. It's so important, you heard it earlier. Close the door, 17 people died a year ago where they needed, had, had to die. Close the door. A lot of buildings, hey, how are you? A lot of buildings uh, can contain a fire. Uh, some buildings are, de are designed that way, some buildings aren't. But the hallways, I, I heard I was coming in when you were mentioning about the e-bikes. Uh, a lot of times that these e-bikes are the ones that start fires because they're mix matching the, they'll get it from Amazon or they'll get something. And then that manufacturers of uh, charging points and things like that is not, is not the same. So you would have a fire. So, you know, I know some people have to make their living on e-bikes. If you live in a building that has e-bikes, make sure they're not in the hallway, make sure they are, they're, 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 they're place where they need to be, but they also, that they check. You can ask FDNY to, to inspect the public access areas of a building so they can they can check. But also, if, if you have an e-bike, right, if you're using it for a motor transport, make sure that the manufacturers is checked that it's one of the approved ones because a lot of times you have big uh, manufacturer, you know, uh, different manufacturers that do it that are not fire safe. So that's very important. We care very much about you. We, we want you to enjoy your golden years. We don't want you to be in a, in a fire trap or anything like that. So this these trainings are very important. I want to definitely shout out our directors here and uh, you know and, and Julia and Margie give them a big hand because uh, they're they're opening our house here at Riverdale Senior Center. But uh, it, my number is seven one eight. Are we? Are we? Over there, TV land, are we? 718-590-3500. That's the Office of the Bronx Borough President. Okay, and uh, I'll wait, I'll wait. Okay, thank you. Sure. It's 718-590-3500. Zero zero. Okay, and I'll get I'll give you our email. Uh, well, I, the I'll give you my email. Okay, it's a long one, so brace yourselves. It's yeah. When I'm there, yeah. <laughs> I'm not getting it. I'll get them. It's uh whenever you're ready. It's K G A. G O S as in Sam T as in Thomas O at Bronx B R O N X the letter B as in borough the letter P as in president dot NYC New York City dot gov that's K G Agosto at BronxBP.NYC.gov. Okay, so that's a, a direct link. Um, and you have our telephone number. You can ask for can you also you can ask for anybody at the Bronx World President's Office. We're located at 851 Grand Concourse in the Bronx Municipal Building and Supreme Court, located on Grand Concourse at 161st Street, accessible through the one and two bus, also the D line the B line and the four train, the six bus and the 36 bus and the one and the two bus. 
So those are all will get you there. We're in the second and third floor. And we have a senior ombudsman unit by Larcinia Walton on the first floor. So when you enter the building at 851, just hang a right and you'll get to go to their office on the first floor. So they handle all types of issues uh, and they'll be good. So I just wanted to, again, on behalf of the great Bronxboro president who, who works day and night, three, 365 a year, that she, she, she has your consideration in hand and thank you so much for this ability again. Uh, Julia, Julia and Margie, thank you. You do awesome work. And our colleague, our city colleague in the FDNY, thank you so much you. for your job. Thank you very much. That's thank you. Sure. It's uh, 718 590 and that's the Bronx World President, the, the very honorable Vanessa L. Gibson. And again, she's heartbroken she couldn't make it. So we're, we're, we're here, we scrambled to get here. Thank you, uh, Julia and Margie for accommodating me. And I was always good to see great friends. So it was also to see you. And uh, does anyone have any other questions? Yes, ma'am. And the bus one and two, is that no, it's a local bus. Um, I'm not sure about the express bus. I don't ever see it. Um, oh, there. So I, I think there may be an express bus. There yeah. may be an express bus. So Manhattan. Yeah, he may go to Manhattan. They go to Manhattan. They don't I don't think so. I don't think so. But it's really quick. I, mean, I know the, the nine bus is around here, right? The ten and the nine. And I think they switch. You can you can transfer to the one or two, and they'll get you there. I know on that. Right by uh, Gould, Goulden, Gould, Gould, yeah. But it's it's there's a lot of ways to get there, and you can get there, or you can just give us a call, and we'll talk to you. All right. Um, but uh, it's been nice, and and I, this is my first time here, and that's not a lot. I never usually go to a lot of places. I've been to a lot of places. MC, you know, MC, M, uh, MMCC, and a couple of places, and, and everything. But I, it's so good to see friends and. and Thank you so much, and I'll be here for a little bit. And then, um, yeah, you can ask me any questions after that, okay? Okay, Julia, Margie, thank you so much. Weba. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so any other questions? Anything about fire safety that I can go over? In case, does anybody okay. online have questions? Any questions? You have to mute yourself online if you have a question. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for your time. Um, again, we gave you that information. Uh, oh, somebody oh, does. Hello? Yes. yes. Go ahead. Go ahead with your question. Uh, yeah, uh, yes, I have. Uh, I just wanted to mention to you that I was in a fire. We had a very bad fire in my building years ago. Uh, and uh, I live in a building where there is, uh, uh, it's, it's not safe, <laughs> except the fact I live on uh, the fire escapes. But it was very bad, and the woman upstairs, uh, uh, God bless her, she died. But uh, uh, she was smoking in bed, and she tried to uh, move the mattress out in the hallway, and it was a massive fire our whole side, you know, but uh, everybody got out, you know, and then there was somebody on one floor there had uh, 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 had some equipment in her apartment for her to, uh, to breathe. And uh, so it was uh, pretty bad. And uh, I just wanted to say thank you very much for the information that you gave because uh, um, I wanted to know, do I have to get proof? Uh, I mean, do I have to get permission from the landlord to uh, ask about having these alarms put in my apartment? Uh, no, no, you can go ahead and install. We don't need the proof uh, permission from the landlord. So if you don't have work installed, oh. um, we can install it. Right. Yeah, because and, this, yeah, uh, no. this, this building is not fireproof. Okay, so yeah, 
you have fire escape, so yeah. you know. So, so when there was a fire, you want to make sure to see the wood you <laughs> burning. Sure you know, the fire escape is clear. If there's anything on the fire yeah. escape, let the landlord know. Nothing. Call three one one, and we will we will come through and uh, give a violation if they don't clear that out right away. There's nothing on the fire escape because I'm at home. And I'm always checking to see if anybody dropped anything out the window, because okay. it happened a few times. Okay. But uh, no, it's clear. And there's the ladders on both sides of the building. Okay. And you have that number? Yeah, we'll have to go. Pardon me? You can put the number on the okay. website. I'm going to figure out the website. Okay. okay. So the number for the uh, program for the uh, smoke detectors. Oh okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but they're gonna post it on the website. So that way, yep. All right. Well, again, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for your time and your great questions. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, very glad to have you. Yeah, thank you. No,